What's up, everybody? Welcome to Archetype. My name is Josh Herman. Welcome to the stream today. Uh, excited to have a special guest and a good friend of mine, Jared Morantz, on today. He'll be here shortly. We'll be answering questions and just kind of chatting generally about design and all that kind of fun stuff today. So uh, stick around. If you do have any questions for him, you can please ask them in the chat. I don't know where the chat is. We're going to say it's over here. Uh, write them up in the chat here and we'll, we'll uh, get those to him. You can also hit me up uh, privately on Instagram. That's a fine way to do that. And that is also uh, totally fine and that works as well. Uh, anyways, if you've never watched Archetype before, basically this is a ongoing project-based stream where I'm going through my workflow and working on a couple specific characters. So the one that I've been working on is called The Creator, uh, part of uh, Carl Jung's 12 Archetypes, based on the title of the stream, obviously. Uh, and part of this stream is I also am going to be showing you my workflow, and not just my workflow, but also, um, you know, behind the scenes process, all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, let me uh, share my screen really quickly and show you kind of what we're gonna be getting at. Uh, this is, we'll get this Instagram thing out of the way. Uh, this is my Trello board, which I've been using, using for the stream. Right now we're working on the creator. So this is one specific character that we're working on. And we're using this wheel, which is the 12 archetypes by Carl Jung to go through these one by one and over the course of the next year I'll be making all of these and right now we've started with the artist and the artist is also known as the creator so we're gonna get a little bit of this into this a little bit later just generally talking about design as well with Jared and kind of having some fun and also get you up to speed on where we are in the project right now uh, right now uh, I'll zoom out. I spent a lot of time over the week uh, polishing up a lot of the uh, forms and stuff that were in the previous stream. So uh, what you'll get to see is a lot of the design. There's two overlaid right now, so let me hide that. All of these individual pieces now have been uh, basically what I did last stream. So I ended up polygrouping them or cutting them apart and each one of these is going to just kind of go through them all here uh, is now polygrouped and is nicely polished and i've been slowly breaking it down to look a little bit more and more final uh we will do a little we will be bouncing back and forth today we'll be going into zbrush we'll be going into marmoset tool bag as well which is where i'll be rendering and we'll be going into quixel probably a little bit to get into some texturing and rendering stuff uh, i did end up blocking out some of the lighting I, i'm just kind of playing around with it you can see i actually posed uh, a scan here so we can get into a little bit of what this kind of character is looking like or will look like and I'm just experimenting right now and playing with lighting and I'm gonna today we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about mood and composition and all that kind of fun stuff so if you have any questions along the way uh, please feel free to ask and we'll get to those as we kind of move forward but this is where we are. So right now we're kind of beginning to block out our composition. We're beginning to block out a little bit of everything, really. Um, been playing around with the new Marmoset Toolbag 4. There's a lot of cool things in here. There's a bunch of preset materials and stuff like that. So we'll get into that. But before I bring on Jared, I'm going to play you all one quick video, which is basically catching you up to speed on the process that I wasn't able to do on stream. So I did uh, record that and just did a quick narration so we get you up to speed. It's about four minutes long, so we'll play that. Afterwards, we'll introduce Jared. Here we go. All right, so here we are. This is going to be our polish phase or one of our refinement phases, I guess. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're continuing what we did last stream. So those darkened sections in the middle of those Z tools you can see that are disappearing right now. Uh, those are what we did last stream. So we need basically need to do that now to the entire rest of the model. I'm only really going to focus on the pieces here that are going to be uh, front and center. If they're out on the side or maybe they're a background or a detail piece, I'll probably just sculpt it in and maybe fill it with some texture. But I do want to have these ones that are right in the middle that are going to be the focal point be you know, have more detail on them and just generally look better. So those are all the ones I'm isolating right now. What I'm actually doing is I'm masking each individual piece. I'm polishing it up. I'm masking it like you see here. And then if you hit Control W, that will mask it, or sorry, that will create a polygroup out of your mask. And then I can quickly use the backpack that we created last week on stream, which is basically a quick pop-up menu that has all the buttons we need to hide that. And then uh, as soon as we get that, you can see all of those right there. Uh, when it was kind of flashing different colors. That's all of those polygroups that we've created. So now what we're going to do is we're going to separate that as soon as we make these last pieces here. We're going to separate all those polygroup uh, 
all the groups into their own Z tools. And that way we can work on them individually. And this right here, I think, is the last one I do for this section. So you can see I just group split that. Now I have a lot more sub tools over on the right hand side. And now I'm going to go through I'm adjusting that backpack. That was that pop up menu you see right here. And I'm going to add the selection curve and I'm going to add the slice curve uh, to it. And what, that makes it just a lot faster, so I'm not popping between all these menus all the time. Now what I'm doing here is essentially cutting out the shape, uh, assigning some poly groups, and then I'm going to start smoothing amongst the poly groups to make the surface itself a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'm playing around with some techniques here of smoothing using the smooth groups, the smooth stronger uh, H polish, and you'll see that I kind of get into a flow, but this is the first piece that I, I uh, am using with this kind of new workflow. So here you're going to see that a lot of this, it's going to kind of rinse and repeat. And I'm not going to show you the entire section of that because frankly, it'd be pretty boring. But I'm basically adding some poly groups here. Uh, and then whenever I'm smoothing, I'm using a lot of smooth by poly groups to help refine those shapes. But basically just cutting out all of the noise, making it its own each unique piece. This one was giving me some troubles. It actually has a, an error in the middle, which you'll see, and I had some trouble. What I end up doing to fix that is I just pull all those polygons to one side, and then I just mirror and weld it, which is what you get here. So I'm going to finish up this last piece, and then I'm going to go ahead and start getting into adding some panels and thickness on the rest of them. So here we all are with all those pieces. I'm showing the rest of the subtool there that I, I had, and I'm just slowly enlarging all of the pieces because when you do the masking, sometimes the pieces get a little bit smaller than the individual or the original sculpt. So I'm just kind of dragging it to be back to the original shape. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to start adding thickness. I'm using panel loops for this. I'm using polish either at five or zero. I end up deciding to use polish at five on most of it. Uh, I use ignore groups and I'm just generally going through each one of these sections and adding some thickness. For this part I knew I wanted like a secondary little panel on the inside and so what I ended up doing is just duplicating the piece once it was finished, keeping the polygons that I wanted and creating it as another subtool. I'm going to pull all these out into the right shape so when I'm done with that I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask the inside panel and then I'm going to move it, uh, invert the mask and I'm going to move it and that's going to start giving some much deeper thickness to that. So you're probably going to see that here in just a minute. There it is. This is where I start pulling out the inside of that. And now you can see I'm actually creating a thickness to it. And that way it doesn't feel like a bunch of origami or paper, paper craft where all the, the uh, surfaces are really thin. Uh, and so at this point, now we're basically just refining the design and we're getting back to the initial sculpt, but with more polygons. So uh, let's see how that looks. Oh, look at that. We're back. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. That was that was five hours or three hours and four, four minutes. So congratulations on being in a time loop or whatever you would call that. Uh, basically, what you see there is where we are now. I ended up just having a ZBrush crash while that was happening, so I'm just going to take a second to get my ZBrush back up. And I, uh, Jared is also here, so he'll be joining us in just a minute. Uh, I did one quick thing before we get into that. Uh, download a bunch of models from 3D Scan Store, uh, and I've been using those and actually replaced the, the body that I was using in here. And for some reason, I keep having this weird crash where if I export the OBJ with the texture map on, I think it's a 16K by 16K 32-bit texture, it, it crashes. So I turn this off or just turn this off and uh, then I can export this. Uh, the reason that I ended up swapping at the thing, in case anybody's wondering, is because when we go into Marmoset, it'll actually make it a lot easier to... Um, use that model meaning I'll jump into Marmoset very very quickly I can come in here and I can just go ahead and let's import this thing so file import model export test new scan pose it should be somewhere except I think it's actually really really huge so I'm just going to transform it I think I put it at like 0 0.001 well that's 10,001 0 0.001 0 0.001 0 0.001 0 0 0.001 oh Keyboard's being sticky today. You see there's now something going through his skull. It's a good sign. There it is. And now I can just drag and drop this onto them and delete the original one. I just have to find it wherever it is. 
delete. Not as easy to find things in this thing. Now there's two terrifying creatures on top of each other. But you see how it works. It's kind of cool. And that's why it's nice and easy to do that. Select material. Delete. There it is. So now we can have this kind of matrixy vibe going on. Anyways, enough of that for now. I see a couple questions coming in the chat. And also, I have a bunch of questions, and I think we'll have a lot more questions as we get into this conversation with Jared. Jared, I'm going to bring you on the stream. Hello there, sir. How are you doing? Hey. Good. Welcome. I'm welcome to the stream. I've been checking out your stuff. That's really <laughs> cool. You're, you're rendering in Marmoset now? I'm going to try it. Yeah, this is my first actually second project ever using it but i think that the the lighting is really cool they just reintroduced or added ray tracing mm -hmm. uh, and they also just added a bunch of default materials like keyshot has so uh it's pretty cool like you can if you have um what is it your camera you can just turn on depth of field in your camera which is pretty easy obviously keyshot has this too yeah. but i didn't know that all you have to do is middle mouse click and you can set the focus so like if i'm zooming in on this thing i can click on this and it'll be in focus or i can just click on this and it'll be in focus and then you can pretty quickly adjust like how so it's kind of it's it's obviously more of like a game renderer or, or a real-time renderer but it makes it for a nice quick adjustment so i'm gonna try it out at least i never i've only used it once before for a project so i'm just experimenting with it yeah can you get it on mac i think so i think there was a download for mac it has to be, it has to be like rendering for dummies. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose my. <laughs> it's that, pretty good. Yeah, like very simple-minded people need to be able to use the program. That's why I love Keyshot. So yeah, it's just it's, it's just done. Um, it's so simple. Know, I, can't, I can't figure out the material tree to save my life in in, in Keyshot. Yeah, there's definitely that. Uh, Keyshot is very simple i would say that like marmoset to me is probably the in-between mm -hmm. of like if you want to go like full unreal or you want to go like key shot there's kind of this middle ground because it's it's not really built to do like a big massive scene it's still kind of like that small contained key shot feeling yeah. but it is more um i guess like if you want to get into like the more details of the textures and stuff on the right hand side or uh it just generally has some cool things, but it is a little bit more techy, I guess. Uh, but the 3D Scan Store had a bunch of stuff that we, I downloaded. Have you played with their stuff before? Yeah, they have a really good uh, male-female base mm -hmm. mesh. TTLs, they're, they're amazing. So I will, yeah. I'll use those as bases sometimes. It really, it really depends on what I'm working on. Oftentimes it's easier to, uh, to start from scratch or to start with, uh, you know, doing a lot of superheroes. I have, you know, a bunch of bodies where I've, I've already sculpted out the muscles and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do have, I do have a few scan store things, especially like boots and, and stuff that you don't want to mm -hmm. uh, sculpting when it has to be like just real and not, um, you know, you don't want to burn your time making sure that, you know, the pants look perfect when you're just generating tons of concepts. Then yeah, it's, Totally. Yeah, they. Uh, I part of the reason I chose Marmoset is when I downloaded it, they give you the the Marmoset scene mm -hmm. with the the human whatever all set up, wow. and it looks pretty good as far as like how quick it is and what the detail level is. So pretty. So that's why I was like, I can just take this scan and I can just repose it. So that's what I was just doing in this one. You rig it. Just, no, I just did it in ZBrush. So I just mm -hmm. took this scan, the base mesh in, and then you know I took out his eyeballs. So we'll have a weird uh, event horizon moment here. But mm -hmm. you know you can kind of quickly just pose that scan and repopulate it. I just basically imported it all into this Marmoset scene, and so I had all this the textures and all the materials already set up from their oh. file, and then uh, just start. I'm going to start adding my own stuff. So it would be no different than like adding my character to this scene and mm -hmm. then re-importing this mesh but pretty happy with how it looks and like the the detail is pretty good and like the subsurface is a little little intense in this light but not pretty good overall so they have a bunch of them so i'm playing around with those all that um 
all that breakup you were doing on the uh, the Mechie this- figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would you do that uh, conceptually as a, as a concept artist? Would you go in and do all that stuff? Uh, I try to, but typically I'll give them like if I'm going to do some concept work, I'll give them like mm-hmm. a base sculpt first. So like I'll have this one. Oh, that's the one. This is the one I chopped up. Yeah. Uh, where is it? There's so many in here. This one. So this is like the one that beforehand. Yeah. For me, like if I was just going to present something to a client, like this is probably fine. Mm-hmm. And then I would either just render it in key shot and paint over it or just paint over it or just render it in general. Right. But to take it a little bit further and try to make those like little, just push the design a little further, get the materials and stuff. I figured I'm going to try to just push it a little extra. Mm-hmm. And now I'm kind of getting into the breakup and choosing a different render that's got some more features. Uh, I was kind of looking at more, my portfolio. I think I told this to you before, but like I'm kind of tired of just seeing um, characters in smoke, like in front of yeah. smoke on my portfolio. Yep. Everybody. I just, yeah. <laughs> all the character designer, like every character designer has like this kind of a portfolio where it's just like... Yeah. Three quarters of you, smoke, yeah. maybe a leg on a rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're lucky, the leg's up, you know, you got something. Yeah. You know, this you know is like... Mean? Oh, in front of a moon, uh, or whatever that is. That's pretty cool. I mean, that was was a a tutorial, you know. It was, yeah. Well, you could you could get away with it. It's just it it's always that problem of like like okay, here it is at at three quarters, no extreme foreshortening because we have to know what the design is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna get that much variation, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I want to try to do more 3D stuff, so that's why I'm yeah. trying to get into, like, I want it to live more in 3D, and I want to maybe do, you see a lot of the NFT crowd kind of doing this now, but, like, this kind of, like, this, where it just, like, kind of does this, that's that's a bad rotation, but, like, you know, it just kind of, like, yeah. yeah, like, it just kind of, like, spins around them kind of a thing. I'd like to do a little bit more of that kind of stuff or something, so. Yeah, I've been doing uh, turntables of everything. I find mm-hmm. it really rewarding, but I think it, I think it goes back to my... Um, my maquette days mm. of just like having something kind of completely resolved and, and in an object at the end of like the design process. So I always, and, and clients are, are like, they don't need the turntable. Like I'll, I'll give them an orthographic, like front side back or, or front three quarter front three quarter back. And that usually, you know, does it, especially on symmetrical characters. But uh, I just like having, these models uh, turning around on one of my screens while I work. I know why. Just it's, like it's soothing? <laughs> what is it? Familiar. Um, yeah. Uh, ego stroking for, for a short time because it, it only <laughs> takes like a day or two before I hate something I've done. But there's there's a brief <laughs> moment where I'm like, like good for you. Like, this feels good. That, that I do that sometimes yeah. where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to put whatever the last render or the last thing I just put up, I'll put it on my other screen and just be like, yeah, yeah this is going well. This project, I think, is actually going okay. Yeah, yeah It's a confidence boost. It's just like, yeah, you can, you can yeah. do it. You can get this. You did that cool. You did something cool once. Yeah. You know? That's why I still have like a bunch of my stupid toys on my desk just like cheering oh. on. Just yeah, cheering you on. I got a couple of hot toys. Uh, I love I love the Iron Studio stuff. Have you oh yeah, that out? I've seen it. I don't own any. They're cool because you know the hot toys are great. They got a great level of detail, but you'd have to pose them in order for it to be cool. And mm-hmm. they do pretty decent poses. Um, also, hot toys get a little ridiculous. Uh, the cost or yeah. just how many there are? <laughs> yeah, both, both. Um, but yeah, the, uh, I don't know. I love the, the iron studio. It's just, it's just there, you know? Oh, and of mm-hmm. course, like, you know, the stupid, um, the pop toys. It's just like, you know. Oh yeah. How many of what like type of toy do you have the most of? Do you have the most like pops? Do you have the most hot toys? Pops. <laughs> pops. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. I have, I have three hot toys. I got two bad suits. Yeah. And yeah, like uh, Thanos. Yeah. Is just, this is my my go to. Oh, that's badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah Mr. That's, Robocop. That's great. <laughs> it's it's funny too because it's like I feel the same level of fulfillment <laughs> from the hot. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you're like this yeah, is just then, fine. 
you know, one's like 900 bucks and another one's 10 bucks. Yeah. Let's see. I'll try to see what it, what's my favorite. One that I got recently, uh, my Nicole, my wife, got it for me uh-huh. for my birthday is uh, this guy here. I don't know if you got one of the Mondo. Did you get any of the Mondo ones? That's too big. Oh. No, you shouldn't show me stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no. That's, yeah, that's one of my faves. That's really pretty. Oh, man. No, I also, because I don't, I don't like stuff. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in constant war with stuff. Like you'll notice, like my space is uh, mm-hmm. pretty sparse. Not not super organized, but I, you know, after after two kids and a messy wife, like like I just want nothing. I want I just want don't want anything there. So my rule is, I don't collect things that I I, I don't work on. Okay, um, that might be a problem for you. I'll break it. Uh, it's. Sometimes well, you, I, I do a you lot of work big, on a lot. Big bad monsters at the end of movies. I get, I yeah. get a lot of those. They barely, they, they very rarely make those. So it's really, like, yeah. Like I did, I did that giant evil dragon um, at the end of San Chi. You know, mm-hmm. you don't mm-hmm. have like I, I don't know if they're memorable enough. Like it, it's a design kind mm. of. It, it's just like like okay, now here's the big obstacle essentially at the end mm. is the big obstacle like a MacGuffin wow. almost in a weird way yeah yeah it, it's it's kind of like like i wonder if, if it actually has any you know staying power in someone's brain which is why the character work is is so important mm. because people identify with it eventually i i noticed like it just got to a point where and i, I love doing the big monsters um mm-hmm. but they have no emotional impact at a certain at a certain point it, 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 sometimes it, yeah it, yeah and it's just some big giant giant thing just some big giant messy thing with with like teeth you know which is funny. yeah you know they labor over it all the time but you can really tell what has the staying power because they won't even bother you know putting it on a t-shirt or uh or making, <laughs> making like well or yeah like yeah like one of my it was it was cool it was a cool design yeah, it was fun. It was scary too. I'm surprised they let mm-hmm. me get away with it. Um, yeah, didn't think I'd, I'd, I'd get that through. But yeah, memorable. I, you know, not sure. Not sure. It's always the characters always beat you know the big monsters. What do you think is the most memorable monster? I feel like there's a couple most of us go to, but I'm curious what yours are. Oh, in general, oh, it's always Alien and Predator. Always um, Alien and Predator, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's alien because, of course, it was a unique design at the time. Actually, it wasn't a unique design at the time. I don't know how long Eager was was painting that guy before <laughs> it, really before it, it like, finally came out. Like, ah, oh, let's put that in the movie because it existed before, you know, mm-hmm. the film, obviously. Uh, and um, you know, it was shot so beautifully. Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. You know that that will always last, and then Predator, uh, because that's probably the best creature character ever. You know, yeah. like like its its motivation, its emotion, everything read so clearly. Like its interaction with with like Schwarzenegger with Dutch in the film. Like mm-hmm. looked at his eyes, and that's the only thing that was left popping through of the actor, and even that had contact lenses on it or sclera lenses. Mm-hmm. You knew what he was saying. You knew what he was thinking. That's hard to beat. I cannot think of. Uh, yeah, creature character is very specific because I think you know, like you're saying, like doing a big monster where it doesn't really have motivation. It doesn't even like seem sentient sometimes. Right. It's just it's like different to attack and be a threat. Like that's yeah, like, yeah. Like you, you very rarely see giant monsters with. Uh, emotional range it's just you know mm-hmm. attack 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 be be an obstacle you know get in the way of our heroes mm-hmm. um and it's a blast you know it's really mm-hmm. fun but yeah the honest you know part of it is that uh you know I, I don't i don't know if it serves another purpose you know like when one has a big monster you know at the end of the film really affected people i'm not i'm not maybe sure. jaws yeah, Jaws isn't really a monster. But it's just like yeah. an enlarged animal, but yeah. I think Jaws is probably the one where people that like really freaked out people because of like swimming. Yeah, and the anticipation 
of it, yeah. you know, the score and everything. But again, it's not, it, it's a real shark at the end of the day. It's a slightly larger real shark. Like shark. I'm sure there have been sharks that, that large. So this, this process you're doing here mm -hmm. with all the, the panels and everything, I do something kind of like that. Well, conceptually, okay. so I like, I'll try to get as much as I can out of, out of one piece and then I'll extract, um, heat pieces, you know, mm -hmm. that I really need to refine. And then once I do an extraction, I might Z remesh it and then clip edges and stuff like that. It's probably not as clean as what you're doing. Yeah. This is kind of a new endeavor for me to try to go a little bit cleaner. I've Isn't seen a lot of build an Iron Man suit. Isn't that like your same sort thing? of, I used to do it like this, but I didn't do it all in, in, uh, ZBrush. I would do a block out sometimes, or one of whether it was Phil or Ryan or Andy, Andy or whoever was, if they did a 3D block out, I would take theirs, and then I would basically build it on top of that or in place of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of, but I'm trying to do more ZBrush, like staying in ZBrush stuff, because I find that I'm like poly grouping and panel yeah. Groups. A lot of poly groups and a lot of panel loops. I ended up last stream. I actually ended up making a little pop up. Do you use any of these? No, no. But I, I customize my my interface quite a bit. Like all you do. of my brushes are on the bottom of my screen. I got all of my like I fill up all the all the edges with stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I we had um, Marco Ploof from Chaos Masons on a couple mm -hmm. months ago and he was doing some stuff and so I'm kind of mimicking his process because I like how they have they do cool design work but it's all three like there in 3D and that's kind of where I'm like I want to try to do some stuff like that that's do cool. aliens count as monsters is a question from the chat do aliens count as monsters Jared I'd say it falls under the, everything falls under creature like non non-human yeah. you know it's just it's just all creature it depends um I guess, I guess it also depends on your uh, beliefs. Like if it's um, if aliens or fiction or a real, or real, thing, yeah, yeah, you know, then it's not it's not essentially. Well, I guess it would still be creature design. I'm not I'm not quite sure. But, Same question uh, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a little philosophy to it, but sure. Yeah, that's um, it yeah, could aliens, be. Aliens are fun. I think. Um, People tend to, so I, I think creature design is often isolated to uh, very recognizable elements. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like creature design might be, you know, something in like, like a world where a fox and an armadillo, you know, made it and, and, and created something like, a, or, you know, very like Terrell Whitlatch. Sure. Like when I think creature design, you know, I think, I think that where it's, your right. references are very grounded and, and you know, you're kind of playing God essentially. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's hard to, to refer to just making monsters as uh, as creature design at times because, um, you know, sometimes I'm, a lot of times I'm not even using reference. So I'm just like mm. playing around with like shape and taking my understanding of uh, anatomy and making it work. You know what I mean? Right. But you should always use reference. Um, but, yeah, yeah. It's definitely know. a bad habit sometimes where I'm like, I should be using reference on this, but I'm not. Yeah. And then you, especially especially when you get away with it. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. actually the worst. Yeah. Because <laughs> you like, like reinforces the bad habit. You're like, well. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Terrible. Um, but you know, after after years of using reference. Um, you won't be that that far off you know it's it's especially amongst you know mammals it's all the same mechanics so honestly mm -hmm. if you understand human anatomy and you spend a little bit of time studying animal anatomy uh amongst mammals like you figure out how the machine works and, mm -hmm. and what visually makes sense and mm -hmm. at a certain point you can make anything make sense uh well one of the things that i i realized a long time ago was that uh, proportions are more important than anatomy mm -hmm. to uh, creature design, meaning like an arm can be long, but there has to be enough meat connecting it to a sturdy enough torso so that you believe 
that the rest of the body can carry that arm. So mm -hmm. it, um, it's proportions, then you can justify it with anatomy, especially if, you know, a character or creature is, um, is not governed by, you know, physics. If it doesn't have to be a guy in a suit, you know, right, I mean? absolutely. It could be something different. Yeah. So yeah, proportions, priority one, uh, anatomy is, is second to that. A lot of people, a lot of people get that wrong. Yeah, somebody that actually, I was shocked to hear this in, in an older interview, but it was basically a, a Jack Kirby interview. Oh, where yeah. He was saying that like his anatomy was basically totally made up. Like it wasn't good, but it was completely graphic, basically. It was all based around like what the what you would imagine it to be like. And I thought that was really interesting to hear somebody like that basically be like, no, like it doesn't really matter <laughs> uh, because... You know, I, at the end of the day, it's what the viewer sees and what they think is like appropriate for it. Like, oh yeah, that looks fine. That looks like an arm. That looks like it can support the thing. I have a uh, tremendous amount of respect for artists that that are that frank with their yeah. with their process. I I, I developed um, an intolerance or quite quite the pet peeve for uh, artists who spend the majority of their uh, interviews just inflating their own ego and talking mm. about how amazing they are it's uh <laughs> it's it does it does annoy me a bit so for, so for him especially someone as accomplished to be that um mm -hmm. that honest is it's just awesome. interesting because it's like yeah. you know at the end of the day it's it's the viewer needs to see something interesting to them and that yep. doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be like purely academically anatomically accurate not at all yeah i'd have to go through his work and, and like look for anomalies like, oh, that doesn't, it's not supposed to be there. I think it's just more graphic. Like, I think he didn't care about, like, this is where all the, the specific muscles go. It's more yeah. just like... These are your landmarks. Yeah. I'm hitting it's the big like, ones, and you can make up the rest. Kind of like Mignola. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, always, I always go back to Mignola. I don't know if you, you remember, but um, every time I, I would teach, I would start with... Uh, I, I'd, inter I, I'd, I'd bring up an artist every, every week, but Mignola was always my favorite because... Mm -hmm. He simplified, and um, and it just it, he just reduced everything down to what needed to be there, and it was like aesthetically very pleasing. Yeah, he, he's you know, like to to pure shadow, basically. Yeah. There's yeah. no gray and, in his work, just obviously. Wearing everything off, finding edges like that's mm -hmm. that's a huge obstacle for a lot of artists. As um, you know, when you want to design. A figure you know there's so much going on there's so much form there's so much anatomy there's so many curves and mm -hmm. then to kind of like brush that aside and just find the simple plane so that you can block something out uh it's interesting because it applies to working 2d and, and working in in 3d as well you know find mm -hmm. your edges uh when i do any 3d tutorials you know i will start with z spheres because i want that low poly mesh i want students totally to yeah the plane at the top of the shoulder, you know, where the sternum is, the peaks of like, like, like all of the, the anatomy, you know, where, where's the bone coming up against the skin, where are corners, where are edges. Um, a lot of people lose, lose that and you end up with a lot of soft, doughy 3D out Forms. There. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah. Why do you, th you think that they just jump into detail too early? Oh yeah. Yeah. Or they jump yeah. into 3D too early. I mean, mm. it's, um, my thing I'd be curious, that, yeah I'm sorry I don't want to interrupt but I'm curious about your thoughts on that because you're somebody who transitioned to 3d and you use it a lot now but you also still have great 2d skills so like yeah I'm curious about your 2d versus 3d thoughts my 2d is adequate um, <laughs> <laughs> okay it's, it's passable uh, I did not I I, I feel as if uh, I was shaped by the industry. Um, essentially, okay. but most of my experience is is in you know dimensional art. Uh, you know, when I started off, I was doing maquettes mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid. You know, and um, you know, I mentioned it before. I thought I thought I was a big deal uh, doing that because I I, um, I got great results in a short amount of time, and I was actually you know I was able to get an internship when I was a kid at a practical effects house. And but, did, we're good. We're friends, so I know some of the dates on this. But you were how old when you got your first internship? Because I feel like that's a pretty 
big anomaly. Maybe. 14. 13, 14 is... 13, 14. <laughs> I don't... I didn't even know this was a career when I was 13. Yeah, I know. I kind of I gloss over stuff because, you know, I mean, I just did I just did a lecture with you earlier. Yeah. And I was just like, how many times... I mean, if people are, are aware of me, then it's like it's like I was going to talk about this again. Um, but yeah, to glance to gloss to gloss over it, uh, yeah, fourteen, I think. And and again, uh, make no mistake, I, I got in everybody's way. I was I was a pain in the ass. I was a kid. Uh, I helped minimally, um, but I did not benefit <laughs> that production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just imagine them being like, "Oh, we made such a big mistake, but yeah. we can't fire this fourteen-year-old." Yeah, he'll like, cry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, I look, I look back at it, and and it, it's funny how like as you age, your your uh, impression of those times changes. And it's like I remember, you know, in my twenties, I was like, "Yeah, I was in there, and I was, I was mm -hmm. helping them sculpt, and I was helping them making molds." doing a lot it's doing a lot and then you know you get a couple of years older and it's just like oh well, you're kind of patient and then now, <laughs> now yeah. like, why didn't they just kick me out i got in the way i dropped yeah. a big drop i remember I shattered, I shattered a giant blow dryer uh, oh really i was making out of foam yeah you gave me very very <laughs> very simple instructions they're carving stuff out of foam and then um uh, covering it in fiberglass because you know it's just a yeah. fast thing they needed all these like giant props and uh, i had i had one i had one job and it was just to hold this these pieces together while the glue cured and <laughs> okay. time, the, the thing was as big as me at 14 so all i yeah. had to do is keep my hand here hey kid just hold this yeah just hold that yeah and, <laughs> and for some reason i thought i thought oh is that does this does this look off? Maybe if I stand back from it for a second. Oh no! Maybe I'll be able to give you know this seasoned professional some you know much needed feedback <laughs> <laughs> from this past, uh, kid. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I I just take a step back, and of course in slow motion, and wind out of nowhere is like middle no. of summer. Of course, yeah. And until that <laughs> moment, just, and it crashes, and the pieces break. Oh and, no. Uh, that should have been it. They should have fired my ass. Um, but they didn't. I think, I don't know, they were like, ah, give the sad kid another chance. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, he can't hold anything. Let's yeah, just... Uh, him, give him a broom. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, him just make him sculpt something and it's not going to be in the film. Just let it cut him. Yeah, just, just give yeah. him some play, put him in a corner, let him feel important. <laughs> And that's we'll amazing he's got to go back to school you know at some time at some point <laughs> at some point he has to go back to school yeah. that's probably true though at a certain point oh there's uh, some there's there's i would say this is this is in the 90s in terms of like accuracy of like this mm -hmm. we just got in the way it was incredibly valuable to me and um, oh, i'm sure yeah no because i thought i thought i wanted to do everything and then you know i'm around all of these like like chemicals, they're sculpting and they're 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 putting guys in suits. They're they're making molds. I got to, to help out. I got to be, <laughs> I got to not be a huge burden on a couple of, of you know molds and, and stuff. And I, I learned the process, and that was enough to make me realize that I only cared. Um, I was only passionate about about mm -hmm. design. So I knocked that out in the summer. And going through college, I've seen I've seen guys you know think they want to be toy sculptors and then mm -hmm. hit the industry and learn the hard way that they don't they don't want to do that for a living and um now they got to figure out a new way to pay off their mountain of, of student debt of debt yeah mm -hmm. so yeah no i i got i got very lucky yeah and absolutely I, that's and you were at stands like for your that was your first out of internship. college yeah not out of college yeah. yeah no it wasn't an internship but oh, okay they're paying me to draw, which was that was that was validating. No, this the when I was a kid, uh, it was a it was a studio in Van Nuys called Soda Effects. Okay, and they did like Wishmaster Two and oh, music Wishmaster. videos. I was doing Disney Channel stuff with them. Mm -hmm. um, they were doing Disney Channel stuff around me, and I got in the way. I want to I want to be very clear. <laughs> right, no, I think that's very clear. 
no delusions of grandeur. Yeah, because I've I've gone, you know, as I as I've said before, it's like, oh, I was I was a big help. And no, yeah, not definitely not. Not even a little bit. Like I I'm, you know, I'm of age, and I'm just like, man, if there was some fourteen year old kid <laughs> in my way <laughs> messing with my stuff, I like yeah. to think I, I. So now I like I have to be at least that cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's amazing. We got a couple questions that have come in. Uh, one is from Adam. He says, is there a major difference in the way you approach character slash costume versus creature, or is it pretty much the same? Uh, the, the process has become similar. The, the design mentality is different. Um, mm. uh, well, okay. You're either, you're either building something, you're either designing something that's going to be practical, or you're designing something that's going to be CG. The process isn't that different. So, you know, um, a lot of it is determined by the client. So mm -hmm. if I'm working with a client that can read 2D, that they can they they want drawings or they can accept drawings or they can they can understand and connect the dots from a drawing, um, then I will I will draw for them for a while. Um, but the the one continuous trend and so I guess it's not a trend, is that people want resolved images uh, in the initial passes. So uh, if it's a creature design, I can build something uh, pretty resolved in a day or two. Mm -hmm. uh, for a costume, costumes take a little longer to figure out because Why is that? if it's practical, then you got to make sure it works and that it functions. Um, mm. uh, and of course, you know, it depends on, on the the costume as well creatures you know you're just you're just playing in the anatomy pool and um you know you can you can make that that work pretty quickly hard surface obviously takes longer i've got some tricks for that there's there are a few mm -hmm. tricks you taught me that I, that I still use that um oh, i don't yeah, remember which one. tricks i taught you yeah one only no <laughs> <laughs> the single trick I taught you is still relevant. That's good. No, there is one I use a lot. I remember, so you were watching me do a costume on, I think it was, it had to have been Guardians. Guardians, yeah. Yeah, and I was I was doing it all by masking out shapes and then inverting mm -hmm. the mask and then pulling like shoulder pads or, or yep. you know, floral pieces or whatever. And, and you told me, it was like, oh, you can just paint that, you know, mm -hmm. and then mask by intensity and pull out that way. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that, but I've also been doing that in uh, values of gray. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I started with with you know that trick, and then somehow I I figured out that that oh, if I put a lighter gray next to a black, and I inflate, the black lifts further than the the medium gray, and so I ended up I do a lot of hard surface that way now. Cool. So it's like it's like a high res mesh and um yeah i can just i can just paint my forms and so you have to actually think like an alpha maker um but you're mm. actually working on the model so it's like okay my, my furthest plate is going to be black if i need a lower step then it's you know a medium gray if i need it not to move it's going to be white um so that that's a process i use anyways costumes creatures um process so yeah the process for costumes you know, they're just, it's not blue sky. It's never, it's never mm -hmm. remotely blue sky. I don't think anything technically is blue sky, but it's especially not blue sky with um, costumes. It's got to fit the actor. Um, if it's a superhero suit, then you got the actor, you got the muscle suit, and then you got fabric and fabricated pieces on top mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with, with more limitations. And uh, yeah, just take a little bit more time um if i'm on a show by myself and they mm -hmm. want me to figure out the costume then i might you know build the model and then do a bunch of paint overs if mm -hmm. uh i'm you know at marvel where they've got a bunch of us on a costume uh then i'll probably put all of my eggs in in one basket and i'll do one or two very resolved models because there are a bunch of other artists that are on it, and um, they're going to get a bunch of options that way. They're not relying on it entirely from me. I'm curious about that. So, like, if you're you're working 
in a bigger group where everybody's kind of working on the same, your philosophy might be to just, I guess for lack of a better term, put more eggs in the basket yeah. and resolve one more. Yeah. And th there's a reason. So every time I get an assignment, I probably have immediately five strong ideas. And that's, mm -hmm. that's just from doing this forever. Uh, now I know that, that two of those ideas are not what they're looking for. And I know mm -hmm. that amongst the three of them, uh, one of them is weaker than the other two. So if I have a week, I'll just do those two. Um, is that just like generally? You're like, I know that one of these is just not going to be as good. Or yeah, or I know, <clears throat> I know mm -hmm. this one's not right because it, right. it's it's just not. It doesn't it doesn't fit the story. It might not fit the director's tastes. Mm -hmm. So why bother? You know, mm -hmm. um, so what, you know, what's the point? I had a, another friend who's very talented, uh, that has an entirely different process and he just 2D sketches everything out, a lot of options. And, you know, sometimes a client, you know, likes that, uh, it, it's really a gamble and it's, it's your best guess, especially when you're working, uh, with a lot of talented artists. So when, when you're on a show, a big show, um, it does, it boils down to who guesses right, not, you know, level of execution. If it's a big show, everybody's good, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't... Everybody's there for a reason, yeah. Yeah. You don't necessarily have an advantage um, in execution. So the only advantage that you can have is, you know, how well you understand the story and the sensibilities of a client and what you uh, bring to the table. You know, sometimes... Um, you know, there's a big piece of me in those designs. And then sometimes, you know, maybe the percentage goes down depending on, you know, what the tastes are of the client, especially if my tastes don't necessarily line up. You mm -hmm. hope that they're responsible when they hire you. and <laughs> Like uh, they look at your portfolio, you mean? Yeah. They're like, <laughs> put me on the cute thing. I'm not that guy. I'd love right. to do it. And I do, I, now that I have, I have kids, you know, I want to yeah. do more cute things. I've yeah. gotten a few cute things in recently, um, things that I can actually like, like show my kids. It's like, oh, see. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, I wouldn't hire me to do anything cute. And I, I've said it before. Um, you know, you can you can format a portfolio entirely based on where you want your career to go. Mm. So uh, you can fill it with superhero stuff. Eventually, if you're good enough, you'll get superhero work. It's not. It's not hard. Um, it, it's it's definitely not rocket science. It's it's surprisingly uh, fair, in in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. You got to get your foot through the door. That can be that can be True. challenging. But when in doubt, if you ever hit an obstacle, uh, work on your book, work mm. work on your portfolio. You can take a lot of responsibility for your career um, just by putting that work out there. Um, I love that. I, I love that about, about our job. You know, I think, mm -hmm. I think that's great, especially guys who have already broke through and it's, it's not that hard in my opinion to break through. If you have an incredible, eh, if you have a good portfolio, good portfolio. It, it, yeah, it's, it's the combination of like, okay, where's your portfolio at and how much are you asking for? And what does the, what, what is, what is the project need? Mm -hmm like like budget wise like most you know the majority of projects can't afford us so right they, they have to get somebody um me right out right out the bat uh you know i wasn't expensive mm -hmm. uh, and i i landed a job at uh at stan winston's because i was the right combination of, of convenient inexperienced and mm -hmm. cheap, you know but i could draw you know. Yeah, kind of all of the above. It's like, yeah. When, in, when there's, you know, it's not always like, like you're saying, uh, it's not always one artist doing the whole thing. Sometimes it's a crew of people. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a business, you got to try to do, you know, sometimes you have one person that you're saying like, this is our elite rock star person, and then then somebody else is going to be a couple juniors, and we're going to fill it out, and maybe they'll do something good, and so like it's just kind of you got to. You can't, not everybody can, you know, pay the 10 out of 10 costs for every designer, for every artist. You got to budget yeah. your, 
your production. So. You got to make a profit. Yeah, and that's that's where you get in. I was like, oh, you can make money off of me. And and the way I right. utilized, uh, you know, I was brainstorm guy. Uh, mm-hmm. They brought me in. They uh, they put me on a drafting table, and I just generated tons and tons of sketches. And you know, people who knew uh, 3D software and who knew Photoshop better than me at the time uh, would you know flesh out those ideas if they got if they got approved you know so it yeah it was, wasn't you to finalize them you were the idea person yeah that's it and i i was that i was that for a long time until mm-hmm. uh yeah my turning point was was when you know um you know it's the ego my, my signature would get would go away mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I'd, I'd figure it all out and someone would model it out and tighten it up and then you know it was like my name's not on that and so i you know Anymore, yeah and so figured out zbrush figured out you know different techniques in, in photoshop so yeah in many ways you know just formed by the industry you know mm-hmm. that's how it happened i like just talking to you because it doesn't <laughs> really even it's though why of... would i talk to 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 you about my origin story. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think it's interesting. I have other questions that are not about your origin well, story. You've heard it, though. You've heard it. So I know. I like it, though. I yeah. like it. Well, I mean, they don't... Yeah, no one's going to join a stream of you and me just talking about our kids. <laughs> well, well <laughs> I guess it has to be relevant, I suppose. Maybe. I mean, it's, it's weird talking to you about, like, like all this stuff you've heard before. You know? It's, it's, sure. You know? I, I got to... I got to... You were asked... I don't know how to yeah. phrase this or bring this one up. I have a theory about you. From a viewer? Okay. No, this is my theory. This is Josh's theory. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. How? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this as like a change my mind kind of thing. Okay. How does it feel to be responsible for the Snyder Cut, Jared? I feel like responsible? you're... Yeah. I feel like I know the art book came out and I know that there was... Was Your Snyder stuff was in there. Data? I think, I don't remember, but this the, the Justice basically, League basically, yeah, Justice League comes out, and yeah. you ended up posting your work, and I think there was eventually somehow the Steppenwolf and the Dark Side stuff all got out, which yeah. was not in the original movie, and I think that the Steppenwolf stuff that came out lit a flame under like so many people. Because they knew that it could have been better, but there was nothing that they could like latch on to, to be cool. like, mm-hmm. this. See, it clearly could have been better. Yes. And as soon as I think they saw your Steppenwolf, and they're like, "See, this is what it should have been. This is what it should have been all along." I feel like that was one of their like, like their rallying cries to get behind Snyder Cut. It's an interesting theory. <laughs> it yeah, is a theory. Well, okay. Well, it's not, I'm not anywhere near as ballsy as that. So if you look at, <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't, no. if you look at the, uh, the concept art book, right? Of, of right. Justice. So, um, step, my Steppenwolf is in there kind of. So mm-hmm. it's you know, like the I, standing one that's doing the, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. they, they did the, the revised horn pattern, um, mm-hmm. the, 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 the X, axe horns um but uh yeah my steppenwolf art is in the book it was just cut and pasted into keyframes so okay you know i was annoyed that they you know obviously that they there was a big redesign of the character um but you know i had you know like christian lorenz uh schrader very talented um Mm -hmm. uh, keyframe artist like he cut and pasted my guy in a couple of his scenes and I'm just like, well, if he can show it, you know, why then not? I can show it. Yeah. So I, you know, yeah. I put it out there and then no one said anything. So I'm like, well, screw it. Okay. I got these other horns better. I'm not sure. The other horns might show. I'm going to get the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll be back. Oh, I just, oh, I just yeah. hit expose and my model exploded. Hang on. There we go. Oh, okay. Here. We're good. Yeah. Let's find the book. I, Again, it's a theory. I just think it's really interesting that being a friend of yours and a viewer um, of and, and a big comic book fan in general and knowing that it, it had been changed. Yeah. 
I just remember seeing comic book sites and stuff being like, look how much better Steppenwolf could have been. And just people being like, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I, I like the... Well, I, I don't know. I, I feel... I've gotten, I've gotten to a point in my career where I'm very comfortable with my insignificance. Uh, <laughs> so you don't want to say too much, yeah. So I don't... I don't, I don't know. Cause you know, you start off and, and you know, you're getting stuff sure. approved and you're just like, I'm a big deal. And then, you know, you realize you do a couple of movies where you're proud of the work and the movie's not very good. And no one cares about your work. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a weird feeling. Yeah. But it, it does, it does definitely put you in your place. It's like, okay, this is definitely a team effort, especially in terms of like, like whether or not it's success, uh, that's, I'm a small part of that. So that's what I mean by comfortable with, you know, my, my insignificance, <laughs> which is sure. It's a nicer place to live in all honesty. <laughs> okay. It, it, yeah, it's probably like, fair. Like, like to think that, that, Oh, this is all on me. <laughs> so this, no, I know. I'm obviously messing with yeah. you a little bit, but I think that there's, well, there's probably some truth in there. There has to be some, some of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta sell, sell some action figures and, and stuff, but, um, yeah. it, it, it helps if it's a good design. I've seen uh -huh. instances where it's a crap design, um, right. but the writing and the acting is amazing. Then suddenly it elevates the design to yeah. know, a new level, and you know, vice versa. I've seen I've seen great designs and movies. It just doesn't hit marks with the audience. Yeah, and you don't uh, they don't care. No matter how yeah. good it is, they just don't care. So. I think I think over time, getting getting older and, and seeing um, how you really fit in the equation uh, relieves a little bit of pressure. Not a lot of pressure. Like it's still you still want everything it's to be still there. Yeah, best you can you can make it. But you know, I think when I realized it was like, oh, it's not my movie, um, then you know, I could be I could be a bit more objective and probably nicer to work with <laughs> <laughs> fair okay yeah at, at the end of the day it's just like oh, he's taking this way too seriously um yeah no look at the okay so here he is in a few shots here like, all right I'll, I'll put you on the big screen yeah so yeah that's that was a version yeah of him, you know that i've done i did a hammerhead kind of shark thing for a while but you know the portions uh -huh. Are the same, like a lot of this, well, yeah, that's that's still a lot of that's still him, you I'm know, a little frozen right now. And frozen. Oh, there it is, there yeah. you good, yeah, yeah, I see it, yeah. And then I'm, I don't know if they did the, the axe thing, but uh, but anyway, so I got I was annoyed, and it seemed to be this film that that you know it came and went, it was a huge disappointment, so I didn't think anyone would care, honestly, mm -hmm. if, I put, if I put the rest of it, just put your there. work out there, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously. There are a lot of things I didn't post. Like I never posted Kilowog. I never posted sure. Dark Side. I never posted Dark Side. Um, oh, you didn't? Okay. No, I was, I was really there. good about that. Uh, <laughs> You're like, and, I'm not doing that one. Yeah, they're like, mm, I, don't, I don't know. They'll be. probably use this later, yeah. Maybe. No, I didn't, think, think, about I didn't it. think they would ever use it, honestly. I, I thought that really? was, yeah, I thought that was dead. Um, uh, that just wasn't going to happen. So, yeah. You know, of course, uh, <laughs> you know, I might, I might, it might come up. It's like, you know, Jared did a pass on Dark Side, but um, <laughs> I, never, I never showed anybody. Um, and I was, I was very proud of that work. A lot of it was, uh, you know, kind of a mystery to me. Um, I was, I was still wrapping up bits and pieces of Justice League when I started on, um, mm -hmm. on, on Avengers, right? Yeah, Avengers with, with you. And uh, it was it was a very weird thing because I was I was no longer you know directly with the project, and so I didn't know I didn't know what was going on. And there were things in going in different directions. They wanted to try a lot more color on stuff. Mm -hmm. I had done a desaad that was horrifying. Um, it, it's it, it's on my it's on my art station and it was okay. funny because Snyder knew exactly what I was doing um, because he, he called it in, in one of me. It's like oh the Crypt Keeper and mm -hmm. I was like yep. because that was that was Got it. biggest influences like I loved I love the Crypt Keeper 
So I did yeah. a Crypt Keeper version, and then I remember when I was on 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 Endgame Infinity War and Endgame, uh, they wanted me to redesign it and make it more safe. So what I did was I I, I looked at the face that I had done for uh, Steppenwolf, and I tried to make you know his family member essentially mm -hmm. like, the same species. So I, I did like the broken chin and everything, the split chin, and I'd imagine Dark Side also has that under the under the metal piece. Under mm -hmm. the piece. Uh, but you know, I was trying to figure out what apocalypticians looked like, and I did like Zach's approach because Zach wanted an alien, and that you know that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like, why would they look human? Superhuman, yeah. Yeah, it's an entirely different environment too. You know, I mean, the the atmosphere on Apocalypse has to be brutal. What what kind of being could survive and thrive in that in that you know industrial heavy you know, volcanic, you know, environment. So, you know, I was thinking about that a lot. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We were just talking about the Snyderverse. There wasn't really a question. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, think, it was, uh, I think it's interesting. Yeah. yeah you were going through the, the history of it. And you were saying that, like, it came out yeah. in the book and then you posted your Steppenwolf stuff. And and then it kind of, from there is, uh, after the book, I remember after the art book came out. Yeah. I got a lot, of, a lot I got of a lot of attention too. People were like messaging me a lot, and it always yeah. made me kind of nervous. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to. I don't want to say anything that is going to right. you know hurt my career that I've worked on developing. Of course, my of course. Life. Yeah, but it is it is very tempting. It's just like, oh, it would have been so much better, guys. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when you, when it comes out and it's like it was the first one kind of came out as like a dud. Yeah. yeah, it's like well, this was biggest, supposed to be like the big thing. Yeah, it was big, biggest disappointment of my uh, career at the time, and yeah, I hurt, I hurt myself on that project. I mean, not oh, not physically, but like, like I pushed myself as Pretty far hard. as I could go. You know, I I grew as as an artist on that show. I was suddenly, um, I was taking on things that I didn't know I could do just because I loved the character so much. Like they gave me cyborg. And I, I never did a mech, anything. Yeah. Really. Uh, and I just had to, I just had to figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, there were a lot of new tricks I was teaching myself. I don't think I took my 3D that far prior to Justice League, and mm -hmm. then, um, then that that went over on uh, on Infinity War and Endgame, and and that was my process there. Uh, yeah, I remember that being the first time looking at your work and be like, "Oh, you push this further than you normally did." The oh, specifically yeah. the the Batman suits. I remember those going much further than I had seen you do costume work before. Yeah, I built all of that, um, and that was that was a labor of love. Like I really forced myself um, to push further. I think. I think they re-sculpted all of it. I don't know if they grew any of those parts. There's, a, there's an incredible team over in the in the UK. At Ironhead, or was it a different shop? UK. No, that Justice League was 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 a UK. A guy named Pierre and his team. Uh, I, I still love those guys. Uh, Brooke Dibble, Andrew Hodgson, and uh, Mark Truck Trunk. Mm. Trunk, Trunk. Mm -hmm. I got to know that. I think he, he's. Uh, they're just again very very sweet, very patient. Uh, people, especially if I'm in the room, very patient, um, very kind, uh, and they, you know, they did an incredible job. Like I remember, I roughed out uh, the Batman cowl for the the redo on just the classic suit, and mm -hmm. then um, you know that got kicked over to my buddy Andrew, and then you know he took it, he took it the rest of the way. Um, it was just it's just a really cool, very tight uh, group of group of people in that space is very different working um overseas they have they have a much healthier approach to uh design to work and, yeah because I, I i got flown over there uh with two computers because i wanted to leave one at the studio in leaves mm -hmm. and i wanted i wanted another one at my flat <laughs> uh, they called them right flat. and i just kept going i mean i didn't i didn't have anything else to do and it was my dream job so right I just like i'm just burning the midnight oil on this one Oh, totally, totally. It was funny yeah. too because, like, like they, they wanted to give me a car. Um, I was terrified to drive in, in okay. Europe because the other side of the street. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. I'm, <laughs> it, it was. It was I'll pass. That, yeah. That it'd be on the other side of the street. There were turnarounds, 
and I was going to be sleep deprived. Like there was no way around. Right. So I was like, no, keep the car, and you know, I will do, I will do cabs. <laughs> and they, you know, they had cars going to and from the studio. Work. So it was just, yeah. Just, just You're like, I'll just use these. You don't have to do this for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they put me in this this mm -hmm. town called St. Albans, and you know it's walking distance of stores, restaurants. I didn't need anything, you know, so I mm -hmm. could just, you know, on the weekends I go to like one of the mark open the street markets, and you know I get vegetables and chicken, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, you know, every night I I cook myself some food and I I'd get back to to work, um, and it's just because I love I, I, I love those characters so much. And I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't miss anything really. Um, it was, you know, it was wonderful. You know, they, I flew my wife out. We did, we did a weekend. Um, my mom came out, and you know, that's cool. The museum and stuff. Yeah, it was, it was cool. It was really cool. And the next thing I know is like three and a half months are gone, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I started to, well, I started to miss the sun. That actually surprised me. Really, I never thought I'd care about the sun. Yeah. Um, like I was, I was good. It was, it was that last couple of weeks where I was like, oh man, it's, um, no daylight. Like I actually started to feel it affect my mood a little bit, but mm -hmm. usually that's, that's when I feel the most creative when it's like, it's overcast and dreary, which is great because, you know, it's overcast and it's dreary. You look off of your screen and you just stare out a window and you can imagine whatever you're working on, you know, wreaking mm -hmm. havoc, you know, outside because that's the world, you know, if sure. We're getting hired. They're going to be. They're going to put them there. You know, it's going to be right. Rain, it's going to be wet. It's going to be scary. So, I it was. It was awesome. It was a highlight. I'll probably. I'll never do it again. You know. Um, right. At least that was it. Yeah, you know, my kids don't need me. But that was that was it. So you know, that's that's the checklist. I also can't imagine a project exciting me enough where I would want to. I'd want to go back over there. Uh, yeah, you and, said Justice League was kind of your dream project. Is there any other dream projects? Just my own stuff. That's it. Just That's all stuff. I've got now. Is getting my own. I see uh, Jared Krzyzewski is in the chat. He said, eventually concept artists who's try that? to make short films, books, comics. Who's, who's, who's he? Who's Jared Krzyzewski? Yeah, I don't know. Hard to know. Is he like a, <laughs> is he a concept artist? Like there's no... <laughs> no, just, just, just the Some name. Some random people you let anybody... Yeah, That's right. Jared Kuszewski is one of the best, uh, one of my best friends. I, I like him very much. He, he was he was he was in my class. He's an insanely talented artist. He's a peer. He's done tons of amazing stuff. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a question. I think we were just he was just mentioning. You know, you were saying uh, your own stuff, and he made a comment about your own. Uh, you know, eventually, concepts artists usually try to make short films or books yeah. or comic books or. So maybe we'll see one of those from from you someday. Yeah, well, I did a short film. I'm probably going to release Ooh. it. Um, okay. At some, at some point, uh, and I have an animated series that I've been working on forever that is ready to go. Um, I, I, I partnered up with uh, with my, my my dream producer, and mm -hmm. uh, he's told me that right now they're not looking for original content, so. We're just waiting. So that's, Got it. That's that. Just the waiting game for that, I suppose. Yeah, I'm sure Krzyzewski's got to have stuff too. Uh, that he's he's ready to go. His his, uh, his wife Jackie is a producer. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure. I'm sure he's working on his own thing. I hope so. I mean, he's doing awesome. he's doing some really cool stuff on like on like big movies. But yeah, you know, you always want you want a friend to reach more always we should always every time everybody I and mean, anyone gets to a certain level they work on the big stuff and then they want they just want to do their own thing because they hit the ceiling and it, it's that's it you know unless you want to be a production designer um there's got to be there's got to be something else yeah that's why you start doing your own stuff yeah well i've always i've always done my own stuff um my portfolio was filled with you know original stuff um, back in the day, and that's that's how I got work. Um, but I don't know if you could do that today. I guess as long as the stuff was was good, it'd be fine. Yeah, for like an inner, like for a beginner, what kind of what do you recommend for their portfolio? Uh, like like I somebody said, just trying to get in. 
yeah, design a portfolio based off of the kind of career you want to have. Um, so, you know, if you want, honestly, just look at anybody who is doing what you want to do and check those boxes. So if you wanted to do what I do for a living, um, you know, get some superheroes in there, get a lot of monsters, get a lot of creatures in your portfolio and, you know, do the day job, go home and keep pumping stuff out um, because you'll never be paid to do something that you haven't proven that you do well, especially in the beginning. Um, mm. and as a working professional, that might happen just simply because you're on the payroll and they don't want to look for someone else. You know, like I've, I've recently done, I'm doing weapons now for some reason. I'm like, why am I doing weapons? Um, but I'm, I can do it adequately. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm okay at it. I'm getting the job done and they don't have to deal with, you know, hiring someone new and doing, doing paperwork. So they're happy. Yeah. That makes it, makes it easy for everybody. Right. And eventually you get a little bit more range. Soon you'll be doing weapons for everything, I'm sure. Because I feel like once you do like one, like, yeah. like you did like one superhero suit or one suit, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you can do superheroes? Yeah. Oh, you can do suits? Yeah. You just, you break through and, and you know, that's it. But if, you know, you have a portfolio full of that stuff, you're good. Starting out today, uh, like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... You would have to find a way to stand out. That would be that would be difficult. Um, uh, you could easily get in contact with anybody that you True. want, uh, you know, to work with. It's so easy. I respond to uh, the majority of of, um, of random emails um, just mm -hmm. because I've, I've been very lucky in the past. Uh, but all these professionals are just like. A keyboard away it's nuts um, especially like post pandemic i think everybody's so used to just communicating virtually it's like if you were were serious and had a good portfolio and really wanted to like you know get some good tips from somebody i don't i don't know too many people who would turn you down for the 15 30 minute zoom just yeah. to like meet them or even just an email yeah just like back break. and forth exchange yeah just to break up the, the day <laughs> the monotony of, of mm -hmm. working from home. Yeah, no, it's, everyone's very accessible and people were actually accessible back in 2005 when I was breaking through. I was surprised. Mm. All I had to do was call. It's absurd. It's, it's like one of those things you never even think of. Like, how do I get, how do I get a job at these studios? How do you do it? And I was like, oh, I'm just call them. <laughs> <laughs> that might work. Like, just, just give them a call. Yeah, and I mean, it, I had no problem. Did through at Stan Winston's I had no problems getting through at uh, at Rick Baker's it was just like that's funny like someone picked up the phone you know um, yeah. Rick Baker at the time uh, you know he didn't have a creature show so okay. you know that that ended that and then Stan was like you know hey come on in of course I invited myself in I was just like hey I just graduated yeah. from our I love what you guys do uh, when can I come by and show you my work? Which is very presumptuous, but it doesn't. It yeah, was it doesn't right. really give them another option. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You hope you hope they fall for it. And they they fall for it. And I, I've said it before, like um, like uh, you know, I got I got through the door because I told them I just graduated from art center, so at the very least I could draw. Um, mm -hmm. I just graduated, so I'm affordable, uh, and. <laughs> You know, stop by might imply that I'm local. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cheap, capable uh, artist. Let's see what he what he has. You know, so it was surprisingly easy back then. You want human interaction because uh, mm -hmm. it's so easy to dismiss a um, an email. It's so easy. To Absolutely, JPEG. It takes it takes nothing. So. If you can try to find that 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 way of, of human interaction, it gets so much easier um, when your work is good. So if you're struggling with the human interaction, build up your portfolio, make that better, and it will get easier. Mm -hmm. uh, it really it really depends on how 
far you push yourself and how badly you want it. Because everybody, it seems like a lot of people want it now. And and when I started off, it wasn't even a well-known career path. Now it's very well. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely far more. The awareness of it is way, way, way higher. Yeah, got a got bunch of people in the chat. We got uh, Justin Fields is here. Oh, Justin. Uh, I think that's da David Alexander's here, and I see somebody says hi to Jared from an old student. Ciao, Francesco Lorenzetti is here. So a bunch of people saying hi to you. I miss a bunch my of Noman alums and such. It's cool. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I miss teaching. When was the last time you taught in person? Obviously, a while ago. <laughs> with me? No, no way. It was after me. It was funny. No, the, the, the lecture I did with... with oh, yeah, yeah. I meant like like structured long course, not like a like day thing. I don't know. Um, well, Noman... I did Noman and CDA for like a decade. Yeah. And that was, that was incredibly rewarding. Um, and I don't know when I stopped. I don't even. I, I, I feel like it's been been like ten. A little while. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Because I was, I was still. You're doing it a lot. I feel like. Together. What? You were doing it a lot when you were yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Noman, I taught two classes, and then on the weekend, and then I, I also, I taught two classes in Noman. I think on Sunday, and then on Saturday, I taught one class at Concept Design Academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, teaching is pretty rewarding. It forces you to really understand your process because you have to, you have to break it down and you have to make it digestible. Um, it's, uh, it was, it was cool. I mean, I. It, it's it's very weird too. Like I, I I work now with so many of my my past students. Mm -hmm. um, I don't take credit uh, for their work or or mm -hmm. it, it, it's like it's, them. You mean like as like yeah, a, a mentor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't think I've never had a student that surprised me. You know, if they didn't have. Uh, a skill level, I, I saw an ambition that that you know I would suspect could take them further, mm -hmm. um, which you know lets me to believe that okay, you know I could give them some advice and maybe steer just a little bit, but you know it's it's on them. You know I, I think yeah, yeah anyone looking for a instructor or a teacher to make them a phenomenal artist that's a that's not that's not how it works right. Uh, like I they can be there to help you answer questions and you know yeah. guide you along the path, but they're not going to make you the. Yeah, you're not. They, they don't do the work for you. Yeah, I'm not going to give you a work ethic. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to hold your hand, you know, through you know a hard job or anything like that. Like it's 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 not possible. So I'm I'm proud of my time as as, as a teacher, and I hope that I I help people, but I you can't really take credit. Uh, for much, I, and and I've realized that because like you know I've had I've had teachers as well, and I was just like okay, well I mean nothing they told me, uh, you know, turn flip that switch, and I was like like mm. now I'm a concept artist. It's like no, I was obsessed with this, and I, I always did this, and I would have gotten you know here with or or without them, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. It, it's a weird thing. I think I'm just grateful that uh, I could I could help influence and and participate in in someone's you know journey. Hopefully, be a you know a positive influence. Maybe even at times open open a door to. But even if you open a door, I'm like you know people could trip <laughs> and and fall. <laughs> like it's not that's not that's not enough. You know, right. Uh, it has it has it has very little to do with with my ability as an educator. You know, one's one success. At the end of the day, I mean, I don't, them, yeah. I don't. I don't think I ever saw the front of you in my class. <laughs> like, like you. No, I think it was. Yeah. The whole time, I, 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 and like, <laughs> you, you did. You, you did more. You barely spoke. 
and then, and then <laughs> I was a really like, bad student in your class. Were you? I was a shitty yeah. student, but that's hard for me. To, it would be very. I remember. Fun. I remember taking your class and being like, "This guy's really good." I don't really want to do this job though, because you were doing all two D. Yeah, because yeah. it, it it was initially two D, and I was like, "Oh, like like this is like cool. I'm learning like design theory, and this is interesting." Mm-hmm. And uh, it was also when Hong was partially teaching too. Well, that was a and so it was long both time of you. Ago. That's a super yeah. long time ago. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I took, I took, uh, I took his second hand. Yeah. yeah, and so it was you and him, and then he would teach some, and then I would teach some. But I was like, I just don't really want to be a concept designer at the time. Yeah. I was like, I want to be a modeler, yeah. and and you were teach, and I, I wanted to be to sculpt and ZBrush all day long. And so you were like, you need to draw in perspective, and I was like, mm, <laughs> no, I don't think this is really what I want. <laughs> and so I remembered like. You were very respectful for your. Uh, you know. I was probably doing the bare minimum, but yeah. but also being kind at the same time. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I was. Uh-huh. Well, the technology wasn't quite there. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't there. Convinced me that that three D was a good design tool, and it is mm-hmm. a good design tool. It's not a good brainstorming tool. You know. I agree. It, yeah. Yeah. If you. Um, if you have a client that, that uh, needs a lot of options, you're in trouble, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, I'm still right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> still right. Um, but, but it is, it's the best way to resolve everything. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. there's, there's no way around it. And, you know, in the, um, in the design process, you know, it's uh, it works. It works for everyone. You know, everyone knows what they're looking at when they see a three D model. So it, it's a very effective way to communicate. The job just has to accommodate the limitations of not being able to generate a ton of options. Mm-hmm. And also, like, man, if if a client can interpret a sketch, if a client can interpret a painting, they're going to get a lot of bang for their buck out of out of oh, an yeah. artist that can can draw and paint. Um, absolutely if they can handle 2d and it, that yeah. sounds weird to say but it is a thing that yeah. a lot of directors or producers or they just they want to see it photo real as finished as like they need to see it as if it's in the movie yeah it's a frame and, out, of, out, of the, out of the movie and there so. are some incredibly talented painters illustrators you know 2d concept artists who can do that yeah but it is easier to do it in 3d just because of how you can light something yeah, and it looks it like even have that. To be that. That was very frustrating. I remember um, it was one of those things that pushed me into 3D when I would see designs that I did not think were good um, mm-hmm. get just just at the table. I'm like, that's goo. How do you not know that's goo? <laughs> and, How do you not see that one? Yeah, the, 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 that's rough. So it's like, okay, I got to do this. I have to, I have to do this. But foundation made learning 3d very easy i only had to figure out an interface and i could Mm -hmm. produce uh Mm -hmm. immediately and you know there have been there have been a lot of you know little ticks little 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 milestones that happen you know along the way and a lot of that is is you know can be determined by who you work with like i remember again jared krzyzewski brought Mm -hmm. uh key shot into Mm -hmm. into the studio that that we were working at and um, I am not an early adapter like like Krzyzewski. Krzyzewski will like devour something, and he'll he'll know it through and through. And I will just rest on you know the bare minimum of like I can rub this out and I can paint over it in Photoshop and I can move on. Um, mm-hmm. But you know Krzyzewski brought a key shot, and then suddenly you know I'm not limited by. Uh, you know the renders in, in ZBrush, and, and ZBrush rendering has gotten you know better and better and better, of course. Sure. And, and you know it also helps that you know Krzyzewski is pretty patient, so you know I could I could you know ask him questions, yeah. And, and just bug him. Hey, got a question for you? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd ignore him for weeks, and then he'd show up with key shot, and I'd just be like, Hey. Buddy. Like, oh, hey, what's up? That's oh, cool. Like no, I've never. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, amazing all the time always very kind very very willing to share but it's you know that's also a big part of um the decision you have to make as you know an artist starting out 
you better go to a studio where you can learn from people, you know, mm. you're around, um, school, school will only get you so far, but, you know, sitting next to Jared for a couple of, I want to say years, um, was really beneficial sitting next to my buddy, uh, Alex, um, Andrew GF is a, oh, yeah. a keyframe painter. He's uh, great. Art. Yeah. I was just like, Oh, you can, you can do that. Oh, okay. Oh, you just paint that. That's that was- it. Yeah, exactly. You didn't, you didn't model it. It's all okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess that's an option. So, you know, stare, stare at him working for a couple, um, you know, you, you gave me a bunch of tricks and it all like, it just forms you over time. You know, my buddy, uh, Tully, who uh-huh. uh, doesn't really, you know, do, he, he doesn't really, you know, run to the spotlight. Uh, he's an amazing artist. I've sat next to him for a while and it's just like, anything I can't do, I can just knock on the cubicle I'm like, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey um, do you have an idea how to do this thing? Yeah. yeah. My proudest moment, I helped him with something once in, in Zebra. I don't remember what it was, but I remember <laughs> making a point of it. It's like, I helped you? I was, I did It's good. official. Yeah. Like, yeah, I no, did I this. Know how to do that? It was one of my proudest days. Of just like, <laughs> I knew something he didn't know. It was, it was incredible. That's always kind of cool, though. Where you're like, oh, yeah, I this mean, one that, moment. Yeah, I've been that for other people too. Like, um, like my buddy Constantine. He he's you know long time traditional artist. Like he used to work on you know a drafting table with acrylics over at like Edge Effects back in the day, and he's, mm-hmm. he's phenomenal. Um, and then I remember, you know, I was getting into ZBrush and perception is a really funny thing. Like I remember even my earlier pieces in ZBrush, artists were looking at me who didn't, who didn't do 3D. They, they thought I was cutting edge, which I thought was, was really funny because I was doing like the bare minimum, lighting it in Photoshop, bringing it into, into, um, into, into uh, Photoshop, lighting it in ZBrush, bringing it into Photoshop. Anyways, um, so I would I would be the guy who he would ask a bunch of ZBrush questions, and then uh, he got he got pretty good at ZBrush. He was okay. There was always there were times when like I would talk to him about a thing, and I know I'd, I'd lose him. And then uh, mm-hmm. they started working over at Avatar uh, on Avatar on the on the on the, uh, mm-hmm. the two sequels, and then suddenly like we're speaking the same language. He knows everything. Um, Crazy. Yeah, he even knew a few things I didn't like. It was just amazing. Like, how wait, where'd things. you learn all these things? Yeah. Yeah. And again, his foundation was amazing. So it didn't take him that long. He was just being in it yeah. every, every single day. So there's, there's definitely something to be said for you know, being in new environments and not being comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not comfortable, you're going to grow. And right. uh, I'm a little concerned about that. I've been comfortable for a very long time. And so it's, I got to pick up a new program. I was, uh, I was going back and forth with, there's an amazing artist on Instagram. I'm probably going to butcher her name. Um, no. Just so you know, uh, none of it is in the chat. None of what is in the chat? None of it. From oh. the Nomen student. Oh! I, yeah, he's here. He's not saying hi. I was, I don't... <laughs> I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Yeah, I've always uh, gone by the. He's a very here. Very talented guy. Yeah, he's uh, mm-hmm. he's a very talented dude. No, I've been bugging Vlada Haldkova. Uh, she's okay. she's an amazing artist. I find I find so many amazing artists on on like Instagram, and her work her work yeah. stood out because she, she can get like very scary, you know. Okay. Um, it takes it takes a certain person to to do horror uh, very very well, and she's really good. I've been bugging her about Blender. She just needs to. She needs oh, are to you going to get into she, Blender? Is that your next thing? Yeah, we talked about it. I'm gonna. I think I have to. But I don't know that that Marmoset stuff looked cool. I don't know. Blender just Blender seems could probably to be, do that too. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm, what do I know? But yeah, maybe. Um, but but when it comes to like setting up keyframes and mm-hmm. environments, like like you said, you said Marmoset is just a notch above Blender. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm Keyshot, sorry. yeah. Keyshot. So I, I think I've got to I got to push a little. I think Blender be a good choice for you. Because yeah, I think that'd be a gonna, nice stretch. Um, you can also do more environmental stuff and fog and all that. I don't think you can yeah. really do that as well in in Marmoset. 
Yeah, I think Marmoset or did you say Marmoset or Blender? You just said Marmoset. Yeah, it's, I don't think you can do Fog very well in Marmoset, but I haven't tried. Yeah, I saw. Did you see uh, Andrew Domo Domochowski's? Uh, he has like a Nvidia tutorial hmm. uh, on like it, it's a it's a it's a woman on a bike gun. It's like some cool dystopian piece, and he was he was blocking it out in. Blah, blah, blah. I, th I think it was Blender. He was blocking it. And, and Domo's, Domo's a fun artist because, mm -hmm. you know, you look at his thumbnail and it's like, oh, he probably could have just kept going with the thumbnail and then got <laughs> it. Um, just but kept was, working on that. Yeah. It was like, like you know, if he, <laughs> if he kept working on the thumbnail and, and didn't do the 3D, it maybe would have been, you know, a notch less resolved <laughs> than the mm -hmm. than the. 3D. He did get he did get some really cool results, and there was like like atmosphere plugins and stuff like that. He's a very talented guy. Um, I met him. He took he took my class, and of course, I take absolutely no credit. Um, he, was, he was pretty brilliant um, back then too. But uh, it does you know that that tutorial. You know, it's like oh, I gotta I gotta do this. He draws he draws beautifully. Like his, mm -hmm. his character design is amazing stuff. Yeah, for sure. There's so many good. Everybody's good. It's a lot of good people out there now. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be hard to fit, find a way to stand out. Uh, somebody was asking, who was that horror artist again? What was the name? It. You can type it in our uh, private chat, and I'll get a link to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's you find it. yeah I'm just gonna. You were saying earlier about you know, sometimes like a bad design that's like just but it's the movie makes it work i feel mm -hmm. like horror by like its nature is kind of that like there's been a lot of like what i would call like bad designs yeah because you horror. can just do a gooey you know bloody stuff and kind of get away with it or even just like the original i mean i think now it's iconic and it's interesting but at the time like Michael Myers, mm -hmm. like the design for Michael Myers is just a dude in a jumpsuit with a white William Shatner mask. Yep. Like, like that's not like a brilliantly thought out piece of design. <laughs> it's well, just, but it works. And now it's so yeah. iconic and you're like, well. Yeah, but what makes it go. iconic? You know? Right. Um, what do you think makes movie? it iconic? Well, yeah. How it's shot. I think it's, they I think it's the shot. I think it's also just the there's so much of the the posture and the character, just like the looming figure, like a faceless white faced mask, just like clearly not a person, but kind of a but there's a person in there. Yeah, it was like a shell. Mm hmm. Of a person. Um, yeah, and he, they, they tapped into something, you know, and and it it worked, but you know, it it was. Uh, it's just a well done film, so mm -hmm. it uh, it just goes to show. Is like you know, some days you're you're you know designing you know some big monster dragon and some multi million dollar budget film, and other days you're you're pulling a you know Shatner mask off the shelf and <laughs> painting it white. You're putting it white, yeah. Yeah, and you're kicking that dragon's butt. So it uh, it really depends oh, interesting. On, the, on the project. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I've never done a Michael Myers. I've never gotten that. I mean, it's also you know you have to be in the right like situation. It's be kind of lucky. Yeah. And also, we're always going to be we're always going to be thinking about those films because they were the you know the earlier ones. Now everything is kind yeah. of derivative, and it's just now now it's like okay, how well can you? do something within the formula versus back then you know, they're creating the formulas they're, they were trying to try right. figure out and contribute to the genre i'm trying to think of something groundbreaking uh recently in film a more recent groundbreaking thing yeah uh, like or, from a design or, standpoint design maybe even just just a movie in general like like there's a lot of great movies, but you know, it it works well within the framework. Um, 
Oh, did I lose you? Oh, you cut your feet. Yeah, it I think I'm back. Within the within the framework of you know stuff that that already exists, so I'm trying to think of something. I thought Dune was great. That we got a couple comments. So, uh, one, Dune was really good, but it's obviously built on a book too. Yeah, and, and it's you know, lack of a better word, it's a journey. remake. Hero's Journey again. You know, it's it's beautiful film. I really liked it, but I I don't yeah. know if it's super groundbreaking What's in that way. It's not. It's just very well. Uh, I feel like. The, the more Sony animated projects like Spider Verse is probably one of the bigger ones. Visually, yeah, visually, visually for sure, and even just the way that they—I mean, even their storytelling because the way that they tell that story, and they because they're so, they acknowledge that like nobody needs to hear another Spider-Man intro story. Yeah. That you know that they kind of are with the times on that, mm -hmm. and now they introduce so many different types of characters and. I thought that one was a really good one for a couple different reasons. Yeah, Spider Verse was, was great. I mean, I'm thinking of in terms of like breaking structure, like Memento. Sure. Mm -hmm. Did you watch? Did, what about Tenet? That was very different for me. It is. It's the backwards thing again. Yeah. Oh, Chris Nolan loves time. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think that. Yeah, Tenet was good. I, I do. Yeah, I appreciate it. I don't know. I don't know. It, um... it is one of his movies that I watched. I've watched it three times, and every yeah. time I've watched it, yeah, I actually like it less, even though all of his other movies, any name any other Nolan movie, and if I watch it again, I like it more than I liked yeah. than I watched Did it the last Inception time. Inception lose its impact? No, I still like Inception because there's so many little callbacks. I guess I'll give it a, ch uh, a chance. Prestige is incredible. Interstellar is incredible. All those movies are great. But uh, Tenet was one where he tried to do different things, and it for me, it just didn't land. Uh, David was asking a, a really good question about going back to the um, the horror like Michael Myers. Do you think that the color blocking of it is what makes it stand out? And he also noted that Jason has very similar color blocking, and Ghostface also has very similar col color blocking. From Scream? Yeah, like basically white mask on black or blue outfit, dark blue outfit. Uh, it's, it's like possible. very classic it horror. Is, they were cashing in on the success of Halloween. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's that graphic read. The I read. Mean, yeah, anything, anything impactful has to work in its simplest form. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's what makes design good is if, you know, there aren't a lot of frills and mm -hmm. it works in a very reduced uh, way, then, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you've also got Freddy Cougar and that's, that's pretty busy. I mean, it's still, it still has a Freddy's Freddy's super busy, yeah. Yeah, in comparison to, you know, Jason and, and, and Mark Myers and... Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, Alien Predator. Like, Alien's obviously very simple. It's shiny and black, basically. In, right? in, yeah, in color scheme. In, in, yeah. in, in form, no. It's, it's, in form, it's very complicated, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's a great rule that, that you realize. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's going to be that complicated, the paint scheme better be simple. And mm -hmm. Predator is... is uh, very simple, so his paint scheme is, is all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so that's 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 a tried and true rule uh, that that works. You know, to this day, very well. Yeah. What's uh, like a a movie monster or character that you like, but is kind of um, it's not one that everybody thinks of. It's kind of a sleeper, kind of goes under the radar. Or more under the radar. Oh, I think there was there was a there was a weird mutant deer thing from a film called Ritual. Okay. If I have that, if I have that right, and uh, that that Ooh. didn't get what it was. There was uh, one of my favorite feature designs uh, is barely featured in in a Stephen King. 
um, movie called The Mist. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there was all the goofy stuff in the uh, in the store, but then mm-hmm. at the end, they're driving out, and there's this like giant, the huge, that, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. tendrils coming down. Yeah, that the thing, Cthulhu look. Yeah, that thing blew me away, and this was this was a long time ago. Yeah. So that one, that one. Really I like that one. Died. Yeah, and it's very, it's very obscure. Like it just, it just shows the immensity of the of, of, of these of these creatures. So, yeah, that one, that one really stuck. And I think you know, you don't even see the design in its entirety. And uh, I think that's, that's part of the appeal. Yes. Yeah. A full a full reveal is is gonna kill you. Um, it's it's gonna hurt your design uh it's going yeah. to feel contained and uh we just know what it is all of a sudden it's like oh i know exactly what this thing is it, there's no mystery anymore yeah you really you you really looked behind the curtain and that's mm-hmm. that can be a problem um especially for a character that needs to be you know massive uh seeing the end of it is is not a good mm-hmm. idea um, especially if it's, if it's not a character if it's represents it is just the moment you know that yeah really cool totally uh let's talk about movies real quick i've been i've asked this to a bunch of people before mm. are you a big theater person or do you prefer to watch movies at home movie theater yeah are you a big movie theater person or do you prefer to watch at home uh, well i i'm so busy that i watch <laughs> movies on my reference monitor that's my main monitor that's my <laughs> reference monitor that's my other reference monitor um while i'm working so if it's really good mm-hmm. uh then i'll insist on watching it in theaters if i'm in the theater uh, i tend to get kind of anxious and and look mm-hmm. at the people around me and hope they don't mess it up for me so, oh really yeah, there's always. I want. I want people to not exist. Um, what is it that annoys you in a theater? Is it? Is it talking? Is it texting? Is it crunching? Is it all that? What is it? Everything. All that. You know, yeah. every everything. Because I, I really just want to. Uh, I just really want to pay attention to everything. My wife. My wife loves people who get excited at you know in these event films. So she likes. Yeah, them. like woo. And yeah. And I just want. I, I You're like, shut up. <laughs> like, what did he say? What did he say? You I couldn't to, hear him. Yeah. You had to hoot. And now, <laughs> now I don't know why you're seeing what he's doing. Yeah, it's Thanks. amazing. Thanks. Your your cheer was so important that we had to we had to miss out yeah. on the story. I hate <laughs> that's usually uh, my experience in, in, in films when they're when that's they're, funny. they're noisy. And I know Question. you're supposed to enjoy that. Like um Yeah. Like I, I'd even if it was something I worked on, I'd I'd get super annoyed. Like I remember. Um, oh really? Yeah, and and you know I had to like like well God, that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, there were moments in like like remember when Captain America picks up that the hammer and uh-huh. he's gonna take Thanos' ass. Yeah, every, of course. I'm, you know, I'm in the theater, everyone's hollering. I'm just like, Shh. And, and, no, um, I need to enjoy this moment. No, it's like I, come on, I worked so hard, guys. <laughs> And, um, I need to enjoy this. Yeah, and and that was that was silly. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not a fun person. So it's <laughs> it needs to be quiet, and everybody needs to just sit perfectly still. And that makes uh, sense. You know, let me let me let me absorb. Yeah, you got to build a self a home theater. Uh, mm-hmm. For somebody who was asking in the chat, if you wanted to watch the making of what I'm working on, there's this whole playlist on our YouTube page of of me basically going step by step so you can watch episode one two and three we're on episode four right now so you can go check those out if you're interested uh i'm interested so if you are a a, if you're in the movie theater Mm -hmm. what is your do you have a movie theater ritual do you have a candy that you always get do you have a drink that you always get no 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 i uh well my wife i guess my ritual is i go with my wife um, uh-huh. and, uh, uh, she likes raisinets. So I, mm-hmm. I guess I don't have a preference. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But I do take more most of her raisinets, so I eat I eat all of her. <laughs> and okay. Then, um, now she's into popcorn too, so I, I'll, I'll do the popcorn. Uh, do you ever do the raisinets in the popcorn thing? No, is that a thing? Yeah, so I saw somebody do that once. I've never done it. <laughs> I, would, I would not do. It. Um, but you know, they each their own. I don't want to yuck someone's yum. But um, yeah, uh, that's no. We, we used to really love going to the ArcLight. Uh, mm -hmm. and now yeah, we saw some movies with you guys. Yeah, did we did? Mm -hmm. That weren't premieres. No, they weren't premieres at the ArcLight. They didn't have premieres at the ArcLight. Well, not for right, us. Right, right, right. We saw them at the El Cap and at the Dolby, I think, mostly. Oh. Right. Um, we did go to the Chinese theater once, though, for a premiere. That was fun. Yeah, they had a couple there for like crew. I think it was. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Uh, no, we don't really have any. We used to go. We used to go all the time to uh, yeah. the theaters and then, you know, trying to figure out like maybe she'll <laughs> let me see something I like, or I have to let her see something she likes. But we we usually meet in the middle on a few. On a few yeah. Um, I've worked on I've, I've worked on a few things that are not. I've, I've worked on a lot of things that are not good. <laughs> so so you know she's good I, with me. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, somebody was asking. They're not razor nuts. They're raisin nets. They're, they're <laughs> Somebody you, thought you said razor nuts. They're yeah. raisin nets. Uh, it's a raisin covered in chocolate. It's very. It's a very particular note. Uh, uh, raisin nets. I, I think so. Maybe I just said it fast. <laughs> I, I can't uh, imagine. Very different. Ever, ever thinking they were called razor nuts. And if I did, I imagine that someone would have corrected me by now. <laughs> I would hope so, yeah. Oh, that, uh, Justin is correct. They're saying that the book signings were at Arclight. We did a couple of those. Those were fun, yes. too. Yeah, those were fun. Yeah, Arclight, Arclight Hollywood. Arclight Hollywood was great. Is it, is it, it got, you now? I don't know what it is. Did it get picked up? Does anybody just chat? Anybody from L.A. know what happened to Arclight Hollywood? Or if it's still uh, up for sale? Because I think they went bankrupt. Yeah. And I don't know... It's going to reopen. Is it going to reopen as part of ArcLight, or is it reopening as another th theater Regency chain? Regency bought ArcLight. Regency uh, did. AMC bought it. AMC bought oh, it. Okay. Yeah, my local ArcLight ended up going to Regency. And it's, it's a shame, too, because ArcLight, it was a little bit more expensive, but I think you paid hmm. for... Uh, for um, for audiences that usually don't scream at the screen. So we've gone recently and, and mm -hmm. it, it has changed a bit. Like it's funny how like oh, really? yeah, making making the tickets just a few dollars cheaper has has, has made the audience ruder. Um, <laughs> yeah, Have like you tried the Alamo? I'm like an Alamo evangelist, but I love the Alamo Draft House in downtown. No, I don't usually go downtown. You're a big downtown guy. Uh, yeah, I used to live there, but now yeah. I obviously don't. But uh, the Alamo Draft House is in the block, and it has a really great theater experience. I think you might like it. I think I might have been there recently. The Alamo uh, is it? Is it like a lot of outdoor dining? Mm, no, it's all indoor. It's all. I don't go to places. I don't know things. Uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to some place that, that was like a brewery slash restaurant. I thought that might be it. Uh, it's like a theater chain, uh, but you can eat at your at your seat, and they also have a very strict... So here's the rules of Alamo Draft House. I feel like uh -huh. people who've watched the stream have maybe heard this many times before, but the yeah. rules of Alamo Draft House are that you... Uh, you can eat and order food from your seat, and they have a full menu, and they have a full bar, uh, which is cool. But the way you order is you basically like write on a little piece of paper and you put it at the end of your table and somebody comes over, they have like a, a runner who will come and pick it up for you. Mm -hmm. um, but because they have that system, they also have a very strict no talking, no texting rule because they basically encourage you to rat out other people who are talking and texting through your pieces of paper. So awesome. if somebody like next to you is like being loud or texting or playing a game or something, you can just write on your piece of paper and be like, hey, the person two to the left of me is being super rude. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come over and they'll talk to him. But they don't have, no confrontation needed from you. That's great. I think, but maybe. 
I wonder, do they have, I, I think I went to a similar place in Florida. Yeah, that's uh, a chain. It, 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 I think it's probably in Florida, I would imagine. Yeah, I think I saw, we went to, went to Disney World back in the day, and then we did Universal, and then we were waiting, I think, for a flight or something. We ended up doing a theater that seems very much like that, and that was, mm-hmm. that was great. I really liked it. They also have a really cool aesthetic. Are you a big Disney person? Sure. Do you go to Disney World? Disneyland uh, a lot? Oh, that my wife. My wife is. My memory for for Disney is pretty good, so I don't need to go as often as she does. She right. wants to go a couple of times a year. I'm good a couple of times. You know, like maybe once every two to three years. Mm-hmm. Um. So Disney. Disney's interesting. Um, I think I think there's a lot of cool stuff. I'm not I'm not a big crowd person. You mm-hmm. know, I, I don't I don't enjoy that. Um, I do like like crowd of artists. I, I'm, I'm I'm cool with, but just like like you know, shoulder to shoulder with people trying to get onto a ride. Yeah, you don't want to be in like a 45 minute line with some random people where you know yeah. you're hearing about their random day events. Yeah. And we went we yeah. went recently. Um, hmm. And it's it's also a much different experience with kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my, my kids are at an age where um, they're not having a lot of fun. Like they're 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 really uncomfortable. So it's you know we'll go. We, we went once and it was very hard. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, mm-hmm. So with kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's hard. It was, it was it was kids, and it was like this window when when you know Disney had opened up and. Oh yeah, we're vaccinated, um, and uh, yeah, I found it a little nerve wracking. I, I guess it wasn't uh, was it wasn't a blast. I, I do want to check out, you know, um, Marvel Land and mm-hmm. uh, the new Star Wars ride. I saw Star Wars Land, and I was I was super impressed. Like that was, mm-hmm. that was yeah, the production of it's really cool. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, but you know, I'll go, and then I, I don't need to go for a while. But I think I'm going. I might go in a couple of days. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Good timing. Not. My wife's birthday. Um, ah, that'd be fun. Yes. Uh, we might we might bring the in laws, but that's easier because you know mm, you get a little break and everything. Yeah, um, makes sense. But yeah, Disney. Disney's cool. I'm a. I'm. It was also. I remember when you know we'd be at at Marvel and and uh, you know we're surrounded by Dis- a Disney themed environment, and then to go from mm-hmm. that to Disneyland seems a bit, you know, redundant. Um, sure. It's it's amazing. It, it's 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 very cool. I don't knock it. I don't knock the uh, the artistry. I would just always rather be at home <laughs> uh, <laughs> working on something that excites me. Uh, right. I do also like, in all honesty, like these these um, the, these uh, places where people go. Anytime I'm, I'm going on a vacation or anything, it has to be nature. It has to be. Um, I have to unplug. Really? And you know, going to Disneyland is is really just like going back to it feels it feels like work it's just mm. you know it's it's characters environments it's you know now that do you find yourself it. like evaluating it oh yeah 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 as soon as i started working in in practical effects even before all the superhero stuff i was about evaluating it like i i just like knock every surface it's like oh that's fiberglass <laughs> <laughs> oh this is how this is made this is how yeah, this is made oh, i bet this is foam back that's really cool how they they did that like, oh. <laughs> Kind of drop the ball yeah. on that. Like yeah, I, yeah. I remember, like it's just no joy in me. It's it's a shame. Um, I remember riding on the Little Mermaid ride, which is is pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. But you know, you know, my wife's enjoying it, and I'm just like, wow, I'm really surprised they they made Ursula out of foam latex. You think that that would disintegrate over time or not not hold up? <laughs> I would have gone with your thing. And she's um, like, shut up, Jared. Yeah, she's yeah. Just, please shut. Up. Yeah, please stop ruining. <laughs> everything um yeah i can't i can't uh unplug especially you know disneyland seems very seems so much like the job to me that it doesn't Mm. i can't i can't escape um any of it so that's why you know uh vacations are nature 
you know, it, it sure. just breeds get it's out grass, it's animals, wildlife, just something. Absolutely. Not the job. Um, cause the job, the job is fun. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to knock it, but it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to unplug. Can you do it? Can you just go and, and enjoy it? Or do you just see echoes of the career? I can or- enjoy it. Yeah. I don't, I try not to get into it. I try to have that suspension of disbelief broken when I'm there. Uh, I think that? The, the only thing that bothers me most, oddly the most, is just the character suits. Yeah. Because I'm always just like, for some reason, it's it's just like, who's under there right now? Yeah. Like it, it just there's something about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're going to be safe, you know, tying people without criminal records. I'm sure. Sure. Uh, but the uh, thing I. The thing I, mean, I really like about Disneyland, about more than a lot of other places, is it just feels very safe. So, like, yes. if you go there, you can lose something. And I feel like I've lost, or family members have lost things over the years, and mm-hmm. we've always found them. Like, we've never lost anything for good. Yeah, kinda I cool. Mean, like, their security is on top of it. There was a, a YouTube uh, clip I saw of an attempted uh, child abduction. Mm. And... Uh, they, they got swarmed, like security just nailed them. It was like crazy. Happiest place on earth. Hell yeah. You know, that was, yep. that's awesome. So, I mean, they, they really have that under control. And that is, that is very cool. Like I'm, I'm grateful that, that Disneyland serves um, that, that for people. Like it, it's wonderful that people have a place to escape that, you know, I can see, I can see it when my wife goes there and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she's having, She's having fun and, and, and everything. And so I'm, I'm glad that like there's an institution that takes that kind of um, pride and, and works that, that hard to, to make that happen for so many people. It does yeah, concern you though, you see, see the, like the hardcore Disney fans that, you know, you know, they were just there yesterday. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're head to toe, um, you know, you know, wearing the stuff and, and, uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's, a, it's a bit much. It reminds me when I used to work um, on MMOs. I, I worked for a company called NCSoft for a bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. During the writer's strike, I was working on MMOs. And it was my first video game gigs. Uh, it was a great, it was a great um, experience. I worked with a lot of talented people. I worked with, uh, you know, Anthony Francisco mm-hmm. over there. He actually got me the interview. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, really, you know, tons of tons of talented guys. Uh, Kevin Chen. Um, That's Paul, right. I forgot about that. Paul was over there. That was that was funny too because Kevin is this incredible figure drawing teacher. And just a couple of months after graduating, I'm sitting next to him working. So that was, that was <laughs> surreal. And he's he's just he's so talented. Such a. He's also very kind. Yeah, he's kind. He's quiet. He's he's. Uh, you, you can't. I, I've never heard anybody say a negative thing about Kevin Chen. Um, also, yeah. anyone who wants to, you know, be a concept artist, uh, character designer, like you have, to, you you got to go through Kevin. You got to take his figure drawing class. You got to take, you, you got to take that guy's class over at the Concept Design Academy. Um, he's amazing. Anyway, he's got a good school. Yeah, um, it reminds me of MMOs because I. There got there was this kind of weird point morality point uh, with working there, or you know we're working on a game which didn't, didn't do very well, Tabla Rasa. Um, I don't even know if it's if it's, if it's up still, but um, I think they were trying to explain to me. Uh, I think they were called epic items or something like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, they, they wanted me to design these like gold weapons, and, the, the, and I'm like, oh, why are these different? And I'm. I'm not a gamer necessarily because I just don't. I have I've never invested that kind of time. I watch gameplay. Mm-hmm. I love I love working on video games. Mm-hmm. I have nothing but respect for them, but I do not have the time to uh, get good at playing games. So I never enjoy them. So it's always like right. you know that learning curve, and then you uh-huh. know, I have things to do. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. Like I I really love working on like you know Gears of War and. and mm-hmm. the, those franchises i worked recently with you know a bunch of guys from um from dead space but anyways uh these epic items i think they were called epic items and and the uh, project manager ended up explaining them to me he's like okay so when you know a person's been playing the game for a long time and they get a ton of points and they a long time then they can acquire these these objects so i was just like well how how long 
And then he's like, oh, some people play for weeks. And I'm just like, uh. <laughs> you didn't like that, yeah. I didn't like, I didn't like contributing to that. Um, and that, that was, that was one of the first times professionally I, I hit, like, I had no idea. I was, I, I had a moral uh, opinion about anything until, until that, that, that came up. And so that was. Until like, epic items. Yeah, that, that soured the, um, the experience of it. It was like, oh, I don't think people should play these for several weeks. <laughs> but yeah, again, also none of my business. Um, there was another instance too where I where uh, I felt like I had a moral obligation uh, to not do a job. I got a call, and again, work was slow. Every now and then, I'll get a call from people in advertising, and um, this guy had been trying to contact me for a while, and I, I I didn't respond to a couple of emails because you know I I don't typically do advertising, and I wasn't I wasn't being rude. I just didn't have the time to respond. And uh, he kept writing back. He's like, we have a project uh, for an ad campaign. We really want uh, to use you. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually he said, you know, it could be very lucrative. And we're like, uh, well, now I have to respond. I just have to find out at least what it is, you know, maybe. Because right. you know, all I cared about at the time and, and still do is, you know, uh, video games and film. That's, those are my, my passion projects. Um, and I'm like, all right, lucrative. Maybe it's fun. Maybe, maybe they want me to design a superhero for, for an ad campaign that, that maybe that's, that's a fun thing. And what he wanted me to do, because the superhero was in the email and he said, okay, here's the pitch. And he was saying it very fast, which makes me think that he's been turned down before. And he's like, all right. So, uh, the client is the, the gaming, uh, or, or the hunting commission or something. And. Hunters have, have gotten a bad rap lately, and you know all those, those images of oh. very people standing over dead, beautiful animals. You know, yeah. So they want you to make that, and people people have been getting attacked left and right. It's like, so what we need is we need we need this this majestic we need this image of a hunter, right? And, and he, he's he he looks like a superhero, and he's 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 lit dramatically very heroic and around him are all of these animals like like a lion and a rhino and, and an ape and, and a chimp and mm -hmm. something like that and i tried stopping him a couple of times <laughs> i was like hey, I, I okay and he, he's yeah. doing, he, he 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 i guess he thought if he got, just, just got through the pitch you know but um they wanted me because i had done i'd done a few pieces for um the apes the the, the rise and you know Planet of the apes and the the, the the kick so they wanted these like very realistic animals and uh and and you know i was like i gotta i gotta i gotta stop you i can't, <laughs> I, can't. Mm -hmm. I can't do this one yeah sorry peace man and um things things were actually a little slow at the time and i turned it down so every, every now and then you know so was like oh, okay i guess i do have some morals and you know some things <laughs> I'm not, I yeah. guess I'm not going to do that, you know? Um, right. Like, I'm not making that one. Yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, okay. that's probably fair. Get somebody else. Well, it is actually already noon. Oh, it's wow. been two hours. Yeah. Who knew? Easy. Talking to a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for letting me work while we chat. I've been watching. I've been learning a few tricks. Oh, okay. I, I just want to try. That's why I haven't, because I told you I was going to, like, probably work on my own thing but yeah this is a recon mission for you then i get it yeah well I, we haven't worked under the same roof in a while so it's <laughs> that's true where you're going with uh with stuff uh yeah that's those edges look really nice what, what it's just kind of clean yeah what what were you what were you cutting into with that i i use uh the brush uh, the orb do you use the, the orb brush, brush? orb o-r-b orb oh there's a whole series of brushes called orb brushes, uh, like pondering your orb in here. They, they, they're online, but he's got rock brushes, slash brushes, chisel brushes. Oh, these are online. Yeah, these they're are online. I, but I, just search orb. Orb. Oh, oh, yeah, no, that's, that could be There's useful. a ton I mean, in there. there. In, uh, mock cut. For those everything. are good, too. Yeah. yeah, those are very solid. You know what I've been doing uh, recently? Uh, I've been doing a lot of sculptures. Oh, really? Yeah, not a lot of people get use out of that. I love it. Um, what I'll do is I'll yeah I I'll, I'll use it with mock cut and I'll get mm -hmm. very clean uh, edges. If the mesh is too dense, actually, mm -hmm. you just 
uh, select the area you want to work on, and then mock cut into that with Sculptress on, and it doesn't matter what the geometry is. You could almost get away with doing it uh, with decimated pieces, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can just like, just like keep going. That's yeah. cool. I'll have to yeah, experiment works. with that. You gotta gotta give that a chance. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Uh, no, I didn't know. I've used it before. I like it, but I've never really. I've used it just when sculpting, like heads and stuff, to like push detail yeah. in areas where I didn't want to. Yeah, you don't um, need to rematch the whole thing here. Yeah, M Maka M. It's M A H, right? Yeah. M A H. You can use it on yeah. damn standard, and now that yeah. you can, you can hold shift down and like create straight lines. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I will use. Uh, uh, is it damn? Damn standard. I think that yeah, yeah. yeah. I use damn. That's standard. the one I use. Yeah. Yeah, to get get some good edges. Um, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great way to work. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's getting there. I got a lot, a lot of work to do on it. Still cleaning it up, and I'm gonna start texturing this thing at some point. But we'll How get it into the other scene it? soon. How much time? Well, this is probably ten hours, twelve hours. I don't know. So, that's cool. But also kind of noodling. Yeah, yeah. You're too. Yeah, you're not focused. You're listening to me gab on. But, uh, <laughs> I would, exactly. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably just bang out as much of it as I could with like masking and hard polish. But I don't know. If mm -hmm. I, it, it, you know, you wouldn't have those edges. Um, it, yeah, it's just good to get this kind of stuff. But. Yeah. Well, Jared, it's really great having you on. Thank you so much for joining the stream today. You're welcome. Yeah. No, it was very fun. Any any yeah. excuse to talk to a friend is great. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining the stream today. I uh, had a good time chatting with Jared and y'all. Thank you again. Uh, we'll be doing one more stream this year on Archetype. So next week, same time, same channel. So from 10 to noon, I'll be doing this again. Uh, come say hi. Come see how the progress is going. Hopefully, my goal is to finish this project or this piece by the end of the year. So that's the goal and then we'll be moving on to more of the archetypes uh throughout the all of next year so all right everybody thank you very much and uh we'll see you next week bye <laughs>